talk for a second about cable and the kind of cable you'd use. Um, if they install your T1 uh, demarcation jack somewhere where you can't use it, in the basement or, or where, you know, just like they do telephone lines, not where you can use them, you might need to extend it. And what kind of cable do you want to use? Uh, I have a catalog here that I picked up at the local uh, supply house. Now this catalog, I just opened it up to the general page of information, and I was looking here, and I see that it specifies the typical uses. Now, I've circled here where I was able to find right on the, uh, well, right here it says T1, 1.54 megabits per second. This, uh, this is just a standard cable catalog from General Cable that I picked up right at the uh, supply desk. And by knowing that it says Category 2 here, well, I don't think you can buy Category 2 cable anymore. So what you do is, is you just buy Cat 3 or better. And that's unshielded twisted pair. There's also some uh, reason to consider using shielded twisted pair. And in that case, what you would use is, uh, it's called individually shielded twisted pair. This would be if you're really going to extend the cable very far. If you're just going to have to extend it, you know, 10, 15 feet, no problem. But if you're going to have to pull it up through walls and up over ceilings where you might run into uh, some sort of a interference, it could come from the ballast in the lights or it could come from uh, high performance electrical motors that are used for things like elevators or compressors. These put out some significant interference and if you're going to run the cable anywhere near them at all, use the individually shielded. Now every time someone says to me what kind of cable to use and I say use T1 cable, they say, where do I get some of that? Uh, I just simply say, go to your uh, parts house, supply house, or cable distributor and ask them for T1 cable. And usually what I hear is, ah, they won't have that. Well, the truth is, I asked Mike to do that just the other day. He said the same thing, oh, they won't have that. But sure enough, he asked for me and they gave him this hunk of cable. And look what it says right on it. Right here we see, it says 100 ohm T1 cable. Here at the end, I've stripped some of it off so that we can uh, see that we have the two pairs. Here are the two pairs here, and they are individually shielded. You would ground the shielding at only one end of the run. And I would recommend this kind of cable for any type of run that's going to be more than the standard 10 or 15 feet that you might run from the jack to your CSU. If you have to extend the jack any further than that, use this cable. Now if you can't find this cable or if you're in a bind and you have to run it longer than um, the 10 or 15 feet that I'm saying you can use for Cat 3 or Cat 5 cable, then you could always use this other trick of running two cable runs. You could run two Cat 3 or two Cat 5 cables and keep what's called binder separation. Run the transmit pair in one wire or one cable and the receive watt pair in the other cable. And that way, if you run them together, say you could run them up to as far as 100 feet that way without any uh, serious problems. If you couldn't get a hold of this and it was late at night and you had to complete the installation, that's... So I want to cut over here and take a look at the jack requirement uh, slide that we have. This particular slide will show you the eight pins that we talk about. And we're only using two pairs, two, one transmit pair and one receive pair. You want to use a standard non keyed 8-pin RJ45 with a, non, a non-shorting. You don't want the shorting uh, key in there. Uh, that's really all there is to it. It terminates on the jack. This is a WECO type of jack when you go in to purchase the RJ45s and you want to be able to extend the uh, T1 into your facility from wherever they terminate it. You'll buy a WECO.